Hello, everyone, and welcome to the International Campfire Talk series put on by the Boy Scouts of America's International Department and Committee. Uh, so these campfire talks are going to serve as a way to raise an heirs for international scouting and the fact that there are scouts from all over the world. We are going to hear from different pro about different programs and these national scouting organizations um, from Peru and Brazil, uh, different projects that they have, and we're going to learn some culture, um, food, and holidays from the Scout Association of Peru and, and Brazil. Uh, by engaging in international scouting, young people can be better, better global citizens, um, they can have international adventures, and they can make lasting friendships with people from all over the world. So this month, we are visiting the Inter-American uh, Scout region, and we have some special guests. We have Jimena from Peru and Lucas from Brazil. They're joining us live from their countries here on Facebook. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments um, of the live stream, and we will answer them um, at the end of the presentation. We'll hopefully answer as many as we can. Uh, so without further ado, let's turn this over to Lucas. Thank you, Reese. Uh, I just want to begin by saying thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm really happy and glad to be here sharing a little bit about how it's like to be a scout in Brazil with you guys. So I'm going to start with a quick introduction. My name is Lucas Lahoni. I'm 20 years old. I'm a scout since I was 13. And I believe that inside scout, the, the scout movement, you have a lot of different possibilities. And I chose to be a sea scout. And that's something I really love. And I'll talk about it a little bit more later. I'm an environmental technician and currently studying environmental management. Can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, something about me is that while studying to become an um, environmental technician, I've done academic research in scouting. So that's me presenting uh, a research that I made about the presence of non-formal environmental education in scouting, and it was really cool. And also, I like sailing. That's me on that little red square on the picture. Uh, I really like this picture. My mom is really proud of it, and that's basically it. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to talk about how it's like to be a scout in Brazil. Uh, our NSO, which means National Scout Organization, is called Escoteiros do Brasil, and that's our logo over there. And our program divides itself into four age sections, which are Lubinhos, Escoteiros, Senores, Guias, and Pioneiros. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, each one of them. So yeah, next one, please. Our, we, our first age section is the Ramo Lobinho, which begins at seven, six and a half years old and goes until 10 years old. And they're really similar to Cub Scouts. And the emphasis of the program is on learning to live together. They're organ organized around the, the Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. And they're probably the cutest thing you'll see today. They're, I uh, love them. Next slide, please. The second one is the Escoteiro age section. Uh, now scouts are living together in troops and patrols. We want them to develop autonomy and their sense of teamwork. And the program of the Escoteiros is about living adventures with your friends. And I brought this picture. This picture is actually mine. I took it. So they were there were these two scouts on the picture. They were rowing together. Uh, as I said before, I'm a sea scout. So these are two scouts from my uh, scout group. And they were suing, they were rowing together and they decided to stop on a little piece of land that I don't know if you can see it, but all of these are thousands of seashells. And it was so amazing to uh, see them meeting a new place they didn't know before and doing it together, living their adventure. It was really cool. Next, please. Uh, our third aid section is Ramos Senior, which are similar to the Venturers of BSA. At this moment, we invite our scouts to become better versions of themselves uh, through overcome difficulties and challenges. Uh, the senior program is about developing yourself through self-knowledge. And I think that's really amazing. It was a really important part of my scout life. Next, please. And last but not least, we have the Pionero age section, which begins at 18 years old and goes until your, when you complete 21 years old, you become a volunteer. So it goes until your 20. Uh, so scouts are now seen as adults. Here, our adventures are a little bit different. 
we want to think about our role as active citizens in our communities and in society. We learn how to develop and manage projects of social impact to, and also build a life project to help us achieve personal goals. Uh, this, this picture is also mine. And something really funny about it, uh, I'm currently at this age section. So something that I really appreciate about it is that when, you, when you're making the life project uh, about achieving personal goals, it's really about finding where do you belong or what do you want to be when you grow up. And they're really similar to the rovers that are present on another national scout organizations. And yeah, it's been a really cool journey. Next, please. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about another cool stuff that scouts are doing here in Brazil, starting with the Youth Network, which is Rede Nacional de Jovens Líderes. It is a platform created to encourage youth participation on all levels of the institution. Through work groups, trainings, meetings, and debates, we give a young perspective to relevant subjects on our NSO. Uh, any scout between 18 and 26 years old is part of the youth network here in Brazil. This picture is from the last national training that we had, which happened last November in Sao Paulo. And yeah, it's really cool. Next, please. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Better World National Team, which is a team that we have here uh, that develops projects and programs to all of the age sections and all of the institution, which do a really cool job. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but this is the Better World Framework, which is an initiative of the World Organization of the Scout Movement. It has a lot of cool programs aligned with the, with the Sustainable Development Goals from United Nations. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how this happens here in Brazil. Next, please. Uh, we have different teams working on subjects that are relevant to our reality. We have seven national teams, which are messengers of peace, scouts of the world, inclusion and accessibility, environment, diversity, spirituality, and migration and refuge. So these three on the list are on bold because they are they are teams and programs that are not predicted on the original Better World Framework, but we have them here because they are relevant to our, our reality, our society, our communities. So next, please. I'm going to talk a little bit about something that each of these teams are doing. Our national diversity team is currently developing a he for she badge on partnership with United Nations Women, which is a program that aims to create on our scouts the conscious of the importance of gender equality. And I think that's really cool. Uh, our national spirituality team is currently adapting Dialogue for Peace program to Brazil. It's originally a program uh, suggested by the World Organization of the Scout Movement in partnership with CAICI, which is an organization that aims to build uh, the culture of dialogue. So I think it's really cool to do that on our youth here. And last but not least, our migration and refuge team is currently working on this training manual that they're doing in partnership with United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees for scout groups to correctly receive immigrants and refugees. So we understand that immigrants and refugees are very often people on a situation of vulnerability, uh, socially speaking. So we consider that it's really important for scout groups to know how to receive and how to approach an immigrant or refugee that are now members of their communities. Next, please. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit now about a few things I did in scouting that I'm really proud of. Uh, I coordinated the 21st and 22nd National Task Force for Community Action, we call here as MUCHCOM. Its purpose is to mobilize scouts across the country to generate positive impact on their communities on the same day or week. We have here this thing that is our national calendar, which is available by the beginning of the year. So on the national calendar, you can check like, okay, so the next National Task Force for Community Action is gonna happen, happen in September. So uh, with that said, you can organize yourselves to be a part of this big group of scouts across the country mobilizing themselves to generate positive impact on their communities. I was invited to coordinate the 21st, which was the edition for 2019. And we had 
57,203 scouts participating across the country. It was the biggest edition of the event we've ever had, and I'm really proud of it. And we benefited over 260,000 people from outside scouting. Uh, next, please. Thank you. I'm currently coordinating Heading Quarantena, which is a project that it's like a baby for me. Uh, its translation would be literally Network in Quarantine. I named it this way because it started on the Youth Network. Uh, and its goal is to share social projects that, are, that scouts are doing in Brazil during the pandemic of COVID-19 using the social media reach of the Youth Network. So I was thinking like, we are on a situation where we have a lot of scouts doing a lot of cool projects and impacting on their communities and helping their communities to go through this difficult situation. But uh, our, our NSO was really worried about managing the institution to go through the situation. And there was no place for sharing this kind of project because I believe that by sharing this kind of initiative, uh, people may feel inspired to act uh, to stand up and act for their communities and their realities. And that, that's basically the idea of Heading Quarantena. And the projects we shared so far had more than 11,000 views. And I'm also really proud of it. Next, please. I decided to talk about a little bit about Brazilian culture. So I'm gonna talk about our most famous holiday a religion that was born in Brazil and one regional food from the place I live. Uh, next, please. Our most famous holiday here is Carnival. It's originally a Catholic festival that happens before Lent and it's always in February and March. It's worldwide famous for all of these scholars and happy people and costumes and going to the streets. And it's known as the biggest street party of the world. And it's really fun, I love it. Next, please. Uh, the, there's a religion that has born in Brazil more than a hundred years ago, which is called Umbanda. Uh, it blends elements of Catholicism and religions of African origin. It's famous for its philosophy, it, which is based on respect for free will, unconditional love and charity. And the centers of Umbanda are meant for people who are looking for spiritual spiritual guidance or advices or counseling and they do a really beautiful job i really admire this religion next please and the regional food from the place i live is barreado which is the thing on the picture is a traditional dish from the coast of parana in the south of brazil which is where i live in it's basically meat with onion and garlic cooked for 20 hours it looks like this because the meat came apart during cooking uh, it's usually served with rice and bananas or oranges. And there's this really fun tradition that if you want to check if it's on the right point to serve, you blend it with uh, mandioca flour. Mandioca is a, a root that we have here. So you blend it and you make this little thing on the picture below and you turn the plate on the head of the person who's gonna eat it. If it falls on your head, it was not ready yet. So you don't want to eat barreado that's not ready to be served. Next, please. And well, once again, I want to say thank you uh, or obrigado, as we say here in Brazil. Uh, I'm really happy to getting to share with you guys a little bit about my country and scouting here. If you have any question, if you have any doubt about any project or information that I talked here, um, you can send me an email, you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Facebook. And once again, thank you. And that was it for today. I'm guessing that's my turn. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, how, hi, everyone. Thank you very much, BSA International, for the invitation. Super happy to be here and to share with everyone. Um, my name is Jimena Ojeda Ramirez here. I know it's it's long for people in the States, but we use both last names. My father's last name is Ojeda and my mother's is uh, Ramirez and that's why it's composed like that. I'm 26 years old, been Scott since 2007. So that's when I was um, 13, I think if I did the math right. 
Um, I spent a little, a little while in the United States. I actually went and did my bachelor's in Iowa State University, double major in environmental science and international relations. I was working in New York for a little bit over a year and I just came back home in Peru last week. So it's been exciting. Can you pass a slide, please? All right, that's me, that's how I look um, when I'm not in quarantine for a long time. So back here in Peru, I am a crew leader um, and my group is in San Miguel. San Miguel is a district and that's how groups are named here. So it's San Miguel Los Noventa, it's in Lima, Peru. And the other gray uniform with the purple neckerchief, it's uh, from this Inter-American Scout Company where I am a youth advisor and work a lot with the whole region and the governance part of it as one member of the committee. Next, please. All right, I am super excited about talking about scouting in Peru since the last year and a half I've been working on the international area. I haven't been able to share a lot about Peru, so this is great. The association is uh, called Asociación de Scouts del Peru, which is Scouts Peru <laughs> Association. Um, and just like Brazil, we also have four uh, branches, which is the Manada, which are the Cap Scouts, same age as in the United States, the Troop, which are Scouts, and we say it's our main uh, branch, just because it's the main age where Scouts were formed and coming from all the stories in uh, BP and all that. Then we have our caminantes, that are like the mentors back <clears throat> in the States. And then we have the clan or the crew, that's where I'm uh, educating now, are the rovers, which are 18 to 21st. The uh, mistake and the story behind them is pretty similar to Brazil. The Cap Scouts here <clears throat> in the Manada are really the work in the packs and behind the whole story of the Jungle Book know that the true we try to um, commit to their team building and try to teach them leadership and the mentors is a really tricky age which is when uh, scouts are finishing high school and try to get into university and it's a, like a really teenage year super complicated so we're trying to like make themselves figure out what's their best and try to encourage them to find their way per se um, and on the crew and the clan that is the last branch before you become a leader, if you want to try to do a lot of service, that's where they work in a lot of projects and all that serve a lot to the community and also try to find uh, these aspects just to make sure we did what we were supposed to all the other years before and have them leave as active citizens and global citizens and all that we want to educate in a non-formal way as it comes. Next, please. Um, one big thing in Peru right now, it's how we're working on youth engagement, which has been um, a long, long path, a long way until we are able to establish all these platforms that are recommended in the Inter-American region. Uh, you can research a little bit more about it, but they are youth advisors, which is one I am for the region, for example, but we have two in Peru that sit on the <clears throat> committee table on the director's board, however you wanna call it, it's called different in all the countries. So there's two youth that don't have a vote, but they have a voice. They're elected on the other uh, platform mentioned here that is the youth forum, the national youth forums. Actually, I was the director of the first youth forum. It was my baby. Now they have, um, I think when we were, when I did the first one, we were a bit less than, we were 30 participants and then I have my staff and the last one have been like hundreds. So I'm, I'm, it's, I love it. <laughs> then we've had some national leadership trainings where we started using ILT in the box material after a couple um, generations of alumni from ILT, which is Inter-American Leadership Training for those who you don't know it's an <clears throat> regional training which it's usually represented two people per nso goes gets trained on uh, leadership skills and then come back to their nso's and sometimes many of these alumni just are great and they're taking <laughs> leadership positions on their nso's lucas here is one of them he's an alumni 
in the last ILT and um, Reese has also been there as a staff. So it's pretty cool. It's a real cool network that we form out there. And this is what happens sometimes. You just go back to your country and you want to replicate it because you want to show what you learned in your country. So you do the national leadership trainings. And then we also have a youth network just in Brazil. Brazil, it's huge in that. They're great. One of the best examples of the region for a youth network. Um, but I think Peru is now finally taking shape with some really cool coordinators and they're doing some pretty great stuff. Next slide, please. All right, and then we also are working now with Better World. Um, I was so happy when I saw this because I saw this when I've been, I was in the States and, and the team that is behind this is it's great. So Better World also <clears throat> trying to put a framework to accomplish the 2030 UN Sustainable Development Goals and working towards it as an association, educational association. Um, one of the activities that we have is like the second logo that you can see there is Better World podcast of Scott of Peru. So the girls put together a podcast that you can find on Spotify. So if you want something to listen to, go to Mundo Mejor Scott of Peru in Spotify and you can hear they're talking each episode was about uh, different sustainable development goals and telling what some scouts in Peru and from around the world are doing and are already contributing to the sustainable development goals, giving you some actual facts and data, which is super cool. And to me, it was a really cool way to also engage with society and not just, you know, the scouts to scouts, but just to be a bit more broad in how we share things. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> this is um, some ways that we're trying to implement with Better World and trying to like get out there and what actually means the sustainable development and how growth is not the same as development. Um, so we are working with these P's that we call it. So it's like peace, planet, people, prosperity, and partnerships. So it's the five P's of the sustainable development, which I love, I think it's a really great way to put it out there. <laughs> Thank you, next. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about my country besides scouting. Please, if you have some questions about scouting, just put it down in the comments and we'll be happy to answer afterwards. That's our flag. That's the Peruvian flag. It has an emblem where it's represented our biodiversity of plants with the quinoa tree and our animal, it's the vicuña, which is not a llama, pretty similar, not the same thing. <laughs> and the one in the bottom is a cornucopia, which I'm not sure how you say it in English, but it's, it represented the goal that we had uh, on the, before the Spaniards came. <laughs> and then the, there's the map right there. You can see there's three colors, the green, the brown, and the yellow. The yellow is representing the coast which is next to the Pacific Ocean. All the brown is representing our highlands, highlands or mountains. And the green is representing all our rainforest, which is really fun because in, geographically, you can see the green is a lot bigger, but it's the less population because it's the rainforest. Yeah, Nick. All right, so the coast. Um, this is where I live. I live in Lima. Lima is actually in the coast, which is pretty weird for a capital. I've learned. And the couple dancing there, dancing marinera, which is something that I used to dance and it's amazing. It's a uh, couple dance usually. It's a guy trying to um, play with the girl and trying to do this whole uh, curtsy thing, which is pretty nice, pretty amazing. Usually women that dance barefoot, they have beautiful dresses. The guys dance like that. Sometimes the guy is on a horse, on a Spanish walking horse, which is pretty nice. Uh, the other picture <clears throat> with those uh, kind of boats on the side, that's from the north. These boats are actually made years, 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 years ago from one of our pre-colonization uh, cultures. That's what they used to go out and um, fish. They're called caballitos de Totora. No idea how to translate that, but they're boats. And then the picture with the buildings is the city. That's Lima. And there's a lot of parasailing going on when there's good weather. It's a pretty nice city, actually pretty modern, but also has an old town, uh, which is pretty Spanish looking. Next. 
the Highlands, Machu Picchu, that's her baby. That's uh, one of the seven uh, wonders in the world. It's um, amazing, it's huge, it was built by the Incas many, many, many years ago. It was discovered, I think, a hundred something, 110 maybe years ago. Um, the picture on the bottom, on the side next to Machu Picchu is from the Inti Raimi. It's a festival that it was made by the Inca culture to call for the rain and have a good harvest and all of that. But they recreate that until today, I like every year it happens uh, the June 24th and it's huge. And the rocks that you can see behind that guy representing the main Inca are actually that size. They're huge, they're still there. People don't really know how they got there, how they move it and place them like that because they're gigantic. <clears throat> And then on the top side is uh, the Hablada, which is also one, just as Machu Picchu and the Interim. And the three pictures here are representing different UNESCO patrim um, heritage sites or heritage uh, festival or heritage. So they're pretty cool. It's called the Diablada and they have all these beautiful dresses, the masks representing the devil and angels. And one cool fact about Machu Picchu is if you like put your head sides and look at the mountains in the back, you can see like the profile of an Inca, of a man with a big nose. It's pretty great. Yeah, you saw that? Yeah, yeah, I saw your face. It's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> um, the rainforest, I love it. It's my absolute favorite. There's not many people. There's definitely lots of uh, diversity on flora and fauna. Um, we have, I think, the number two on birds and something like that on insects, probably the first ones in Brazil, I'm not gonna lie, but it's amazing. Um, we have the Amazon River to us. You can see some pictures of our tribes. They have very, um, still many native tribes. Um, we try to keep them like that. They're the people who honestly take care of our nature. If it wasn't for them, then the rainforest probably would not be as big as it is as today. Um, and yeah. Next, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a little bit about um, some scouting in Peru and about Peru's country. So if you want to know anything more, don't hesitate to contact me. I didn't put my info there, but you can find me on Facebook, um, Instagram, or on an email. There we go. Ah, questions, email, Facebook, great. Um, you can find me there like that. Yeah. We have some questions. Janine wants to know, okay, how can BSA get involved in international scouting? Um, is it okay if I answer and you answer later as well? Because yeah, okay. So <clears throat> I think there are many ways. It depends, I think, exactly how you wanna get involved. You can always collaborate um, just with the youth. You can contact anyone from the youth or you can just find the different um, Facebook pages of associations or not. But if you want to represent your association, for example, in an international event, you can also do that. I, I'm sure BSA, the ones who invited us, has, has an international team. So you can try to get in touch, get connected with an international team, and you are going to be amazed for how many international things going on are all the time, even now that it's a virtual world. You have the trainings, you have the forums, you have the conferences, you have the um, jamborees and camps. So even if governance, for example, that is what I do is not your thing, you can always find your way into a jamboree, international jamboree, which is a lot more fun. Or if you want to learn, you can try to apply for um, the training, the international inter-American leadership training or something like that. Um, I think there's, those are some ways that I'm thinking of right now. Maybe Lucas, you have some more, you can complement this. Well, um, that's an interesting question, I think. Um, well, I think uh, I would say something similar to what Jimena said. And I would, start, I would start by saying, make friends from another countries. I believe that by making friends and following pages on social media of and other uh, national scout organizations, maybe you can find projects that you can become interested in. And yeah, that's basically it, I think.
uh, do you scouts participate in messengers of peace projects? Yeah, we do here. Uh, I don't know if Jimena wants to answer that one later, but we do. We have our national messengers of peace uh, teams here and we understand the messengers of peace program as about developing projects uh, on long-term uh, perspective. So projects that probably are lasting, uh, that would last longer and try to um, have a constantly impact on the communities, I think. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so also in Peru we do, we do have, um, we have participated on Messengers of Peace. I know we are trying to put together, we're like evolving our Messengers of Peace program to make it more understandable for our scouts. But we have participated before, we understand how <clears throat> the whole process works and the hours and all that. I think it's a great platform to encourage many of our youth and not also to encourage them to do projects of service, but also to teach them some structure and like show because with the whole website that different um, organizations have, not only national, but with the world, well, they can always go and find some project that was done in Africa or in Europe and say, hey, I wanna, I, that's something that I can do. And since it's such a big network, I think it's something really, it's not easy, but it's pretty manageable to replicate and do and I know many people can you know make huge differences with their projects and very besides the awards that are yes of course nice but not the point of messengers of peace I think it's something great that everyone could implement and we're, we're all you know able to do projects I think it's great what's my favorite food from my country so gosh we're very proud of our food in Peru um we have a lot of seafood and criolla food, which is a mix of um, what Spanish brought and our native uh, food. So I think, I mean, myself, I gotta go with seafood, maybe ceviche or uh, arroz con mariscos, which is, um, I guess, Peruvian version of a paella, maybe. <laughs> I think I have to go with those two. <laughs> and I have to go to Peru to try them. Uh, so, uh, as, as Jimena said about Peru, we are also really proud of our food here. I'm a huge fan of Italian food, but thinking about Brazilian food, I would probably have to say Bahiado, the one that I showed on the presentation. It's just, I don't know, it just feels, it just tastes so good. It's amazing. And it's something from the region that I am, that I lived in. And yeah, I'm really proud of it. How are scouts in your NSO coping with COVID? Uh, well, scouts here are, it's, it's a difficult time for everyone. And scouts here are, re are really facing uh, a time when we have to adapt to this new reality. So uh, our NSO is doing a really good uh, job by developing projects and activities that can be done online uh, by the way, we'll have our eighth national jamboree on September, which will be totally online. And we're all really excited about it. So our organization is really trying to develop um, activities and ways to keep scouting happening uh, on during social distancing. Jimena? Come and come. Um, I think... That, that's a great question. And there is so many stuff that I've been impressed by, not only doing it by the NSO to keep the scouts active and you know the members participating, but also by the scouts themselves having these fun different ways to go, like their meetings on every Saturday or every Sunday, having these dance challenges or uh, some challenge to meet people from a different district or stuff like that, you know, these making the TikToks or whatever. I never use TikTok, but my scouts do. And I think it's great. They're having so much fun with it. And they're still sharing. They're still keeping connected. Um, some scouts, um, this guy that we have in the association, he's a leader. He's probably my age around. He 
teaches dances. So every, I think Saturday or Sunday is like healthy Sunday, healthy Saturday. And he teaches this dance class from the Facebook live of the association. And you have like all the scouts trying to Zumba to the music and he's teaching and it, it's just great. You know, it's, it's important to keep moving while we are sitting on the computer all day, every day now. And I think, you know, scouts always find a way. Um, <clears throat> So I'm gonna go to the next question. I think I think it's great. Every, people are just finding new ways. The organization and the scouts themselves are making the best out of it, the smiling in front of difficulties. Maybe you've heard that before. <laughs> um, in the American event, do you have to speak Spanish well? I guess the event who you ask, I don't think so. I think if there is something that I'm super proud about the region is how regardless of any language barriers, we're gonna make sure you feel welcome and you find friends. Like I've seen friendships that work out and amazingly, not one of them not knowing English and the other one not knowing Spanish and it just works out somehow. So I think it depends a lot about the kind of event that you go. And it definitely depends on your personality as well. I feel like if you're going to an event that you're going to be trained and I don't know sometimes translation is just not possible for funding maybe yes you need to speak both languages because then you're gonna just learn better if you understand the language that the band is being taught but if you're going to a camp I, I don't really think you need to speak both languages very well I think that's just my point of view I feel like you can decide but I think it's pretty easy to make friends in our region even if you don't know one language Okay. Well, uh, once again, I'm going to say pretty much what you just said. Well, my Spanish is terrible, and I've been to a couple inter-American events, and I have friends on um, Spanish-speaking countries, so that was never a barrier for me, but I'm working on it because I feel like uh, if I can make it, if I can do anything to make communication easier, both for me and for the person that I'm meeting and trying to talk, uh, it makes the exchange of experiences uh, much better. Uh, it's not a barrier, but it would be good. I don't know. You never know when you may need to speak in another language. That I agree on. I think um, when you do speak the both languages of the region, it's easier to have a deeper connection with the other person. You're absolutely right. Um, I think we have more questions, but I would like to add to everyone who's looking and to Scouts and BSA that might look at this later, uh, get involved internationally. Scouting is huge outside your country, outside mine, outside Brazil. Uh, we have pretty cool things in our association, but you'll learn some stuff once you talk to people from other country that you had no idea about and it's pretty cool. I mean, you can chat to people. I, like I literally talk to people from other country every single day and it's thank you to scouting. And it's just, I don't know, it's an amazing uh, brotherhood, sisterhood. It's a worldwide movement and we can always take advantage of that to learn to be a little bit more of global and active citizens to keep that service going, not only in our countries, but abroad as well. That's it I have, that's all I have. Thank you so much, very, very much for the invitation to be a Saint International, I really appreciate it. And feel free to contact me. I wanted to echo Jimena's comments there. Uh, thank you very much for attending and presenting Lucas and uh, Jimena, I think the scouts of the BSA uh, and everyone else that watched from all over the world uh, is very interested in what's going on. And I think they learned something tonight. I would ask that you keep an eye out for um, the next International Campfire Talks that will be uh, released here shortly as we move to the European region. Um, and that's all. Uh, to stay involved in international scouting, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, scouting.org slash international. Um, if you have any questions, message the page, message them, um, and feel free to share this video and let us know what you think. Um, if you like this, let us know in the comments and we can do more of these international campfire talks. Uh, and that's all I have. Anything else from you guys? Yes, I just wanna, wanna go. 
Okay. Uh, well, I just want to uh, thank you for the opportunity for be of being here and sharing a little bit about how is it like scouting in Brazil, living in Brazil. Uh, and I just want to say that for all of who are watching that international scouting and getting to know people from other countries has showed me how big this world is and how big scouting is because you know you learn a lot you grow a lot you it's just a life-changing experience to getting to know all of this and well i think that you guys are international bsa are doing an amazing job by bringing these international campfire talks and well guess that's it and thank you once again Thank you very much again for uh, what Lucas has said. Yes, and it's great to know people from around the world, find our differences and our similarities and how great our uniqueness makes us when we work together. Thank you so much for the invitation and congratulations, BSA International. I think this is great. I mean, as a community member, as a scouting member, I think it's great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night. Aloha. Bye.